Welcome to this five-minute horse lessons production. In these segments, we're going to talk about all things trot. First, we'll review the trot, a two-beat diagonally based gait. Then we'll talk about the cowboy post, or the two-point, proper posting techniques, and how that should look and feel for the horse and rider, how to pick up the proper post lead, how and why to change your post lead. There will be lots of advice on how to find a comfortable sitting trot for the rider and the horse. Also, some ground exercises that are solutions to common trot problems. In these segments, we'll feature several different horses and riders. You'll see Susan riding both Nino, the Gray Andalusian, and Katie, a racetrack rescue mare, who looks more like a quarter horse than the thoroughbred that she is. Katie will be ridden in both the Western and Dressage saddles. The trot is a two-beat diagonally based gait. Here, as Katie trots along the wall, you can see the white diagonal pair hit, a brief moment of suspension, then the red diagonal. Then that repeats again and again. White diagonal, red diagonal. White diagonal, red diagonal. As Katie goes from her walk to her trot with a rider, you can see her walk steps, and this will be the first trot step there. Diagonal, 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 diagonal. In these segments, we're going to talk extensively about how to pick up your trot and make sure that your horse is in balance as you pick up that trot. A quick review of your leg cues when you pick up your trot. My horse should not speed up from the walk to the trot again until my horse feels two legs on their side rhythmically. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release. Once my horse is trotted and I want my, ho my horse to speed up, alternating legs again. Left leg, right leg, left leg. All transitions should become imperceptible. You cannot see Susan squeezing in these transitions. Also, no clucking or tapping. The timing of squeezing is important as well. Here, the red sock represents when Susan is squeezing to get the proper balanced trot. As the red sock hits the ground, squeeze, squeeze, and trot. As the hind red sock hits the ground, squeeze, squeeze, trot. Squeeze, squeeze, trot. Cowboy post and two-point, or sometimes called half-seat position. In this freeze frame, you can see that both riders are standing in their stirrups. On the top is the cowboy post, Underneath is the two-point or half-seat. Same horse, same technique, different saddles. Both Western and Dressage or English riders should learn this technique. Before taking on the two-point at the trot, start at the halt and then the walk. At the walk, practice standing and gaining your balance. Feel free to hold on to your horse's mane or the edge of your saddle if needed. Also, practice raising yourself as the inside foreleg hits the ground. This will help you in the future when trying to pick up the correct post lead. After practicing at the walk, pick up your trot and raise yourself out of your saddle. Balance yourself if needed using your horse's withers, grabbing some of your horse's mane, or grab your saddle horn if you have one. Once you get your balance, be more specific when you raise yourself out of the saddle. Ideally, you will rise as the inside foreleg hits the ground. This, again, will help you pick up the proper post lead in future segments. Posting is the act of rising and sitting during the rhythm of your horse's trot. Posting properly helps your horse to maintain balance and relaxation. First, get a visual of how the post looks. There are two ways to look at the post visually. One, look as Susan rises as the outside leg goes forward. Two, 
Second, look at the same sequence as Susan rises as the inside leg hits the ground. There is a quick rhyme, which you may have heard, that goes like this, rise and fall with the leg on the outside wall. The leg on the outside wall is the foreleg, but realistically you should be able to look at either the inside point of your horse's shoulder or the outside shoulder and know if you are in time with your horse. Try this at the walk first. Post, sit, post, sit, rise, fall, rise, fall, rise, fall. You'll want to see the visual from the saddle on both shoulders because your horse's mane will often obscure one or the other shoulder. For example, Nino's mane falls to the right, obscuring his right shoulder. Katie's mane, on the other hand, falls to the left, which obscures her left shoulder. Rising and falling in proper rhythm helps your horse because at the trot, your horse has a balance step and a turn step. Here, the red diagonal is the balance step and the blue is the turn step. As the rider sits, the horse is putting its weight on the outside diagonal to balance and then turns with the next step. So instead of thinking post sit, post sit, think of it as balance, turn, balance, turn, balance, turn, balance, turn. Both English and Western riders should be able to post properly for the balance and relaxation of your horse. Elbows, elbows, elbows. It is very important that riders learn to bend their elbows when beginning to post. It is preferable that riders are not accidentally hitting their horse's mouth each time they rise. Here's a good way to practice to make sure that your elbows are moving when you're posting. You can just grab a chair like so. You can do this in front of your television or your computer. And you're going to start with your knees bent as though you're sitting in your saddle and your elbows should be bent as well. I'm going to leave my fingertips on the chair. And so when I stand to post, my elbows need to straighten as well. So my elbows bend and straighten. My elbows and my knees are working together at the same time. And if you're not doing that, if you're not moving your elbows, what happens is you start jerking your horse's head every time that you post. So it's important that your elbows straighten ever so slightly as you're posting. Another way that you can practice moving your elbows with your knees when you're posting is to just grab a bucket and a set of reins and then you're going to go ahead and just bend your knees and adjust your reins so that your elbows are slightly bent as well and then go ahead and stand up and make sure that you straighten your elbows each and every time that you straighten your legs. If you're not straightening your elbows, you're going to lift this bucket up and that of course mimics your horse's mouth or the bit that is in your horse's mouth. So you want to make sure that your elbows are ever so gently straightening so that you're not yanking, yanking, yanking every time that you rise. Another thing that you'll want to remember when you're posting is that you, as you are standing, you should not lock your legs straight or lock your knees so that they're straight. And when you're sitting, you should not be full on sitting as though you're sitting in a chair. You really are standing but still leaving bend in your knees and then sitting as though you were going to sit in a chair and then you're going to go up. So you're catching your weight as you go down and then pressing it up, but not locking. So it will never look like a bounce and a lock and a bounce and a lock. It will always be a slight bend to a deeper bend, slightly bent, more deeply bent, just like so. And of course, your elbows will be working with you as well. Elbows, elbows, elbows. Picking up the post lead. It helps to keep your horse in balance when you pick up the correct post lead. As Susan approaches cone E at the sitting trot, the timing to start rising is when the inside foreleg hits the ground. That allows Susan to rise and fall with the leg on the outside wall here in red. One more time without graphics. Rise, rise, rise. In the opposite direction, rise, rise, rise. Slowly, inside foreleg here is in red. That allows her to rise with the blue outside leg, which is the leg on the wall. Rise, rise. And one last time at full speed. 
It's important to practice this at the walk. As you approach your cone, rise, rise, rise. In the opposite direction, you'll rise with the red inside leg so that you are standing as the outside leg on the wall is going forward. Once you've worked out the coordination at the walk, try it at the trot. Pick up your trot, pay attention to when the inside foreleg hits the ground, and then rise. Here we go with the blue. Rise, rise, rise. Let's revisit the rise and fall with the leg on the wall. When riding, I find this confuses riders. It just takes too long to look down to the outside and try to figure out if that shoulder is going forwards or backwards. I urge students instead to look down briefly at the inside shoulder and to listen for the inside leg hitting the ground. This is a much more precise moment to rise. It also puts the rider on the correct diagonal post lead. So think of it as rise as the inside leg hits, sit as the outside leg hits. Rise, sit, rise, sit. This still allows the rider to rise and fall with the leg on the outside wall, but it's just more precise in the timing. Changing the post lead. To change your post lead, you will sit twice and then rise again. Here, as Susan rides Nino, as she approaches E, she's going to sit twice and then come up on the opposite post lead. And then see this footage at increasingly faster speeds until we get to normal. You will change your post lead when you change the direction and the bend of your horse. This means if you are trotting figure eights, you should change your post lead if you are changing the direction and the bend of your horse. In this shot, I have Katie on a counter arc circle, meaning her bend is opposite of the true circle that we are traveling. Here, I am rising and falling not with the red leg, but with the blue leg, which is the outside of my horse's bend. When I change her bend from counter arc to true or natural bend, I should change my post lead to compensate for her change of bend, which influences her balance. And here, now that she has true bend again, I rise and fall with the red leg, which is the outside leg. The sitting trot. As you work out the details of your sitting trot, the most important thing to unremember is do not sit up straight and put your heels down. When posting, the rider must sit up straight and put their heels down, or level, to find the balance and the leverage needed in order to rise from the saddle. However, at the sitting trot, you must roll your hips back onto your pockets. It is not a sit up straight and lean back, it is a roll back onto your pockets. This frees up your hips to roll gently back and forth with the saddle. Try this first at the walk. Roll back onto your pockets and then, if you have a saddle horn, look at it and roll your hips in the same manner. Your movement at the walk and trot should be from the rib cage down, not from the shoulders and neck. Once you practice this at the walk, every single time you ride your horse, then ask for your transition. Speed control is key here. Keep your horse at a nice slow trot or jog, and then just move with the saddle. Sit on your pockets, look at the saddle horn, roll those hips back, and then roll your hips back and forth with the movement of your saddle. If you are sitting too stiff in the saddle, the trot will always feel like an up and down smack. But once you start rolling back and forth with your hips, you'll discover, especially at the slower trot or jog, 
that there is lots of side-to-side -side action and only a little bit of up and down. Posting versus sitting seat. When switching your trot seat from posting to sitting, there are a few things that you must coordinate. Number one, when posting, you must roll back onto your pockets to find your sitting trot position as you move from posting to sitting. Second, you must adjust your reins slightly longer to compensate for the change in your body position. Practice these skills first on the ground, then at the standstill on your horse, and finally with movement. When switching your trot seat from sitting to posting, there are these things that you must consider. First, from sitting trot to posting trot, you will need to roll your hips forward and sit up straight as you begin to rise. Second, you must also adjust your reins slightly tighter to compensate for the change of body position. Practice your rein adjustments and change in body position on the ground, and then it will become much, much easier under saddle. The secret to a relaxed trot is correct technique, whether posting, sitting, or at the two-point or cowboy post. In these segments, we started with a review of the trot and transitions, then information about the cowboy post or two-pointing, then all things posting, the leg on the wall, how to pick up the correct post lead, when and why to change your post lead, advice and techniques regarding the sitting trot, and even a few ground exercises. The trot is often the most uncomfortable gait for horse and riders, but with a little bit of practice and knowledge, it can become your favorite gait. Thanks to our horses, Nino and Katie. Thanks to Susan for her riding. And thanks to Casey for her camera and audio work.